Twin T circuits are useful for all sorts of applications, including notch filtering, audio EQ cutting or boosting, or for making oscillators that can be used in synthesizer projects like analog drums. When I was experimenting with Twin T circuits, I thought it would be useful to make a PCB so I can replicate several and configure them in different ways without having to tear the projects apart. PCBWay sponsored the project, providing 10 boards that I can set up and work with for several project ideas. We covered the basic Twin T notch filter in this video on the second channel, and now we're taking the passive Twin T notch filter network, putting it in the feedback loop of an op amp, and that inverts the notch response into a band pass response, so we can use it to boost certain frequencies instead of cut them out. And since I developed this board to allow prototyping and I have all kinds of extra components here, it may look a little unrecognizable. So we'll look at this in LT Spice, but for now let's just look at some of the basics on here. We're running a single supply 5 volt op amp here, LM358. So we have a bias voltage to lift the audio input signal so that it can swing positive and negative without clipping. I set this up the way that worked for this particular op amp because it's not rail to rail. So this configuration allowed me to get the maximum amplitude of an input signal passing through undistorted. And since I'm using a dual op amp package, but I'm only using one op amp, I set up the second one with the inputs and output on a header so I can actually use it for something. But generally it won't be used, so I'm terminating it in the recommended way where the non-inverting input should be biased somewhere within the normal common mode input range. So I'm just using my bias voltage and the output should be looped back to the inverting input. So I made a note here, I would put a jumper from output to inverting input here in LT Spice, this is how the circuit performs. On the top I have an original circuit I was experimenting with, and it's just the basics without all the clutter. So we have this twin T passive network in an op amp running at 5 volt single supply. So we can easily see what's going on, and I was experimenting with changing the RC values. This R3 here, I made it a variable resistor. So over here in the simulation plot, as the resistance of that resistor changes, this bandpass filter has a center frequency that can shift from about 500 hertz up to about 2 kilohertz. And just by the nature of the circuit, as the frequency increases, it also amplifies those target frequencies more. But that's okay for what we're doing here. And this is essentially like an audio equalizer for mid-range frequencies, except it can only boost, it can't cut. So frequencies outside the passband are at 0 dB, and as this center frequency is moved around with that resistor there, we change what the pass band is for this mid-range boost circuit. When we're passing audio through this filter, if we change that potentiometer and continuously move this boost frequency around, we can create a wah effect instead of just using it as a fixed EQ. If you're not familiar with the wah effect, you can read about it, but you must have heard it in songs before, where it basically sounds like an instrument is making a vocal wah sound. I found a good example of that in the YouTube music library. And there's some technical explanations available out there for why the wah pedal sounds like a vocal wah. I'll put links to anything like this. And I will also link to this Twin T notch filter design tool, where basically you can calculate the component values to get the notch frequency response you want. And when you put that into the op amp circuit, it'll essentially turn that notch into the peak we have here. Or we can experiment the way I am here in LT Spice. So this circuit on the bottom, it has extra parts on it. It's got the same sort of response where the pass band can be adjusted from a few hundred hertz up to a few kilohertz. But now, instead of this maximum 40 dB, it's only under 22 dB, so it helps keep the op amp from clipping. And there's all kinds of extra things added here. For example, in series with both of these legs on the T, I have an extra resistor, so this pot here adjusts the center frequency of the filter response. I can add this resistor here so I have a guaranteed minimum resistance if I need that. 
I can add this extra resistance here to change the response with this filter leg. And there's this feedback resistance path here. So with all of these extra things, I can change the Q of the filter. I can manipulate how high the peaks go, how wide the passband is, as well as calculating which frequency range I'm targeting. And I set it up for this frequency range of several hundred hertz up to a couple of kilohertz based on the frequency ranges of typical wah effect pedals if I wanted to get started using the filter to experiment with that effect. So to test that the circuit was able to target certain frequencies and boost them, I used a sine wave generator with a fixed frequency and I adjusted the filter to sweep the passband up and down. The test signal was amplified as soon as the filter passband lined up with the test frequency and I tried a few different frequencies to make sure I was able to boost or keep the signal unaffected. Then to test how the filter performs as a wah effect, I went on freesound.org and got some guitar samples to feed into the filter with an mp3 player and see how that goes. The values of the filter can also be chosen so that the circuit will oscillate when a disturbance pulse signal is applied to the input instead of an audio signal. This is how some analog drum synth sounds used to be created in early drum machines. So I set up the circuit with these component values I had on hand, and I'm using the signal generator to make a square wave trigger pulse at the input. So as it goes high and low at a slow frequency, the trigger pulse throws the circuit into a momentary state of oscillation, and depending on the part values, the pitch can be adjusted, as well as the envelope of the sound, where sometimes it decays in pitch and or volume, or it can just sound totally strange. I only just started experimenting with getting sounds out of it like this, so I'll keep trying things and see if I can get it to sound like a drum, but for now this is a good starting point. This has a lot of potential for audio effects as well as sound generating, and having a bunch of PCBs available thanks to PCB Way, I should be able to run lots of tests when I get this running the way I want. Thanks for watching, and check back later to see how this project evolves.